Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope all of you are doing really, really well. So this is your weekend review of all the matches taking place in all the major European leagues. So starting with the Premier League, we had Fulham take on Wolves on a Friday night kickoff, and it was a draw. And I expected this game to go this way anyway. I said it would be a very close one goal game, but Wolves, and it was almost a one goal game. But Fulham found that bit of quality in there. Manon Salomon with a great finish, in fact. Into the bottom corner, making 1 0. And he has been a real gem out of nowhere for Fulham so far. He's, he's been injured for most of the season. Then he came, comes back in this team and, and he shows his quality. I think he's going to be a really, really good player. Uh, Talk about uh, the game itself. I thought Wolves played well into the in the first half, second half. Fulham gave him more control. They tried to get the equaliser. They huffed and puffed. And eventually they were successful in the 89th minute, getting the equaliser. But. I don't know what this game would be like this. I think mo both teams would have moments in the game where they were on top and moments where they were both not playing so well. They were forced to sit back a bit. And I think this result eh, favours Wolves more still. I think even if Fulham got a last minute equaliser and as those Wolves need points, any sort of points to help them stay away from relegation. But I think Fulham will feel like they dropped points here because they needed wins, win games to stay in that European consent. Last in the European places but teams around them now have games around them. Liverpool, Brighton... Uh, Brentford, they all have games on now on Fulham. Uh, moving to our first Saturday, 3 p.m. kickoff, we had West Ham United take on Nottingham Forest. And this game, let's be honest, was bare for four first until the 70th minute where Danny Ings comes out of nowhere, makes it 1 0. And then, then Forest, Forest have done this many, many times. I noticed with this with them. Whenever they concede a goal, they most likely give away two, three goals. Whenever they can, they, because away from home, especially, they collapse. And the same thing happened there, they give away another goal. Really, really quickly, 73rd minute. Then he had to give another third goal, and like by the time they, and therefore, by the time they had recovered from the first goal, they already given it two, two other goals as well, and they just like shell shocked as well, and making really, really hard for them to recover and start playing football again because psychologically, I think Forest do struggle when they get hit with their first goal, and I think their away record is not great either. Six points, I think, from their 25 points they got this year is from away from home. And I think without their home form, I don't know, Forest would be seriously in trouble right now because their home form has just been really, really good compared to the teams around them, I think. But they need to improve that away form, otherwise I think they will get sucked into a relegation fight quite easily because the gap between them and uh, relegation place is now just four points. So they have to stay careful, like the first. Uh, so talking about the game itself, I thought West Ham played a better, com slightly better compared to Forest. They, as they were the home team, they had more of the. They needed the victory at the more compared to Forest that they've needed to give get the win out of relegation zone, and they showed some real qualities in the moments of quality. The players, Paquetar, Rice, they all showed qualities in like that moment, and I think that's why they were just slightly a slightly dominant compared to Forest. Forest, I thought they had a clear game plan as well for the till the 70th minute. They sat deep and then they looked to hit West Ham on the counter. I mean, they tried to play on the ball as well, but I think most of the problem was. For them to suck West Ham and then they hit them on the counter. Which to an extent was working into the 70th minute and after and after giving away the goal they just cut out. But the one substitution I didn't understand from Cooper was Shelby for are you? Because Shelby was actually playing really really well I thought for them. And then he takes a moment three minutes later to give away the goal. So I don't understand personally why Cooper had to take Shelby off, but it's probably a tactical decision, probably wanted to go for the win, I don't know personally, but it's just, I found it a bit baffling, but it's, it is what it is. Uh, moving to our other relegation six pointer, we had Leeds United take on Southampton and then Javi Gratia's first game in charge. And this was a huge result for Leeds United as they won the game 1 0. It was a fair poor goal in the 76th minute, I think, that got them the goal. And it's a fair, I think it's a big goal for Leeds because they needed to win this game to have any hope of staying up because. Southampton are probably the weakest team in the Premier League. Even if they've been showing improvements under Ruben Sellas, the interim, I think they are probably still the worst team in the Premier League. And Leeds needed to win the game, and they did. And they played well too for Leeds, I can't lie. They created chances, they should have probably scored one or two more. And they completely deserved that victory. But now, now Leeds have got something to build on. Now, next they've got Chelsea, who are completely out of form. They can, I think they could probably get a result there. And then you're slowly, slowly building momentum. Going into the latter parts of the season. And let's see what happens. But talking about this game, I thought Southampton were okay. In some stretch of the game, they looked good. But most of it was Leeds who dominated the game. And they thoroughly deserved to win the game. And Southampton, I think they're, I think they're already down. 
Leeds going to take a bit of a miracle for now them to stay up in the Premier League. I think they have looked good, but I think the other teams around them just looked a tad bit better compared to them. Uh, moving to South D Leeds and Southampton's relegation rivals, Everton. So Everton take on Aston Villa. And Villa comes on to top. They win the game 2 0. Let's talk about Aston Villa first. Aston Villa I thought played okay. They didn't play fantastic, but I thought they played well. They did the basics right, which was crucial in my opinion. If you do the basics right on most, most match days, you get the win. And I think Aston Villa have done the basics really, really well there. Defended well, midfield had control, and the attackers were able to finish off the chances. Uh, so I think Villa will take positives. There was a solid performance, and Una Emery side needed that victory because they have been battered and hammered in their last three games. Let's talk about Everton. I thought Everton played well in that first half, especially. They looked defensive solid. But the problem with Everton is they can't finish. They get into the box and I don't think they know what to do in the box. Especially in this game. And in the games, I'm not sure. But this game, definitely. They get into the opposition's box and then after that, they just don't know. They either make the wrong pass, the wrong shot, or the wrong decision in general. So I think they need to work on that a bit more. But I think they do have a bit of quality as well. I think some of the players, they got they are actually quality players. But Everton are in it. And Everton are definitely in the thick of things. And next week, they got Forrest away. Which is going to be another tough game, I think, for Everton personally. I think it's going to be a real test for Everton going away to Nottingham Forest. Probably one of the better teams at home, and let's see what they can do. But I think Everton need to start getting some points there because they are still in the top five. They can't, they, they don't, they can't get relaxed or complacent because they got a lot of work to do still. Challenges: Arsenal playing Leicester City and Arsenal winning the game one 0 But they realistically should have game won the game by more goals by the amount of chances they missed. So talk about the first half, yeah, it was Arsenal started the game positively, they were bright and then they get their first goal uh, from Trossard and it's a great goal from Trossard as well to you for bottom corner but Ben White apparently had fouled a uh, Leicester City player therefore the goal was chalked off but I thought it was a great strike and after Arsenal continued in the same way, they were playing really, really well and come the second half, 57th minute I think the goal came and it's Martinelli in behind the Leicester defence and he made his slots into the bottom corner 1-0 and Arsenal just continued to play in that same way. They were dominant throughout the game. I don't think Leicester... Leicester, I don't think played that badly. But they just couldn't get any sort of foothold in this game. Arsenal had control from minute 1 to minute 90. And uh, Leicester, they, I don't think they even had a shot on target in the whole match. And this Leicester team, they have been really, really good in recent matches. They've been, they, even if the defence is not great, they are able to create chances. And in this game, they just couldn't create anything. And Rodgers, I mean, the Leicester, I think they're still in the relegation fight. They're only five points clear, so they had to be careful not to drop form again like they have been recently, where they're going to build a good run, then the form drops drastically, and then they're going to a good run. They had to be consistent with Leicester City, and <laughs> let's see what happens. But I think uh, this is a huge result for Arsenal. It's going to wait to Leicester, and playing, Leicester were playing well before this game, and getting the victory, I said before, that's the middle game. They needed to win these two games. Now they've won these two games. I think Arsenal... Are back in the title race. They're, they're five points clear now of Manchester. Two points clear of Manchester City, but technically they can be five clear because they play Everton Madrid, which is the game in hand. And talking about Manchester City, they played against Bournemouth, and it was a pretty easy routine victory for Manchester City. Haaland scoring twice, Foden, and I think who else was it? I think it was Alvarez. I can't remember the fourth goal who scored fourth goal. But it's a deserved victory for City. They played really, really well. Pep makes some changes from the game against uh, Leipzig. He brought in Alvarez. He brought on Foden. For, brought in Foden. And they were much more direct compared to I think the Le- Leipzig game. They played with a much more intent. They weren't. They were. They were the ball crisp, and there was everything was all right about their their game plan. I thought Pep had a spot on from minute one to minute nineteen. Too, but Bournemouth couldn't couldn't stop them. I think Bournemouth they tried to sit in a low block, but City's quality really shined through in this game. And I think Bournemouth, but Bournemouth, I think this was really a free hit for them, even if they won. Because they're realistically not looking at this game as a must win because City and Bournemouth come on. But I think they can. They will have to look at the future matches where they've got more free matches coming up and they need to start looking to get points. They're 19th in the table and they need to start picking up points ASAP. And talk about the last game on Saturday, we had Crystal Palace take on Liverpool. And Chris, Liverpool, I thought, played well, but not quite well enough to win the game in my opinion. I don't think they particularly played well. Enough to score a goal, but I thought in the midfield and everything they controlled the game really, really well. And to be fair, I think Palace allowed them to do that as well to an extent. They didn't press the Liverpool midfielders because they knew Liverpool midfielders don't tend to create that many chances, and that's exactly what happened in this game. Palace just sat them in a low block, told Liverpool to try and break them down, and Liverpool didn't, of course, break them down. 
And I think Liverpool, they are realistically looking at a massive rebuild because they need a few players. I think that team, the manager needs to, Jürgen Klopp needs to change his ways a bit as well. I think they need to do a bit of a transitional season as well. I think they I think they need, they need to bring some new ideas into the team. So let's see what happens. But I think summer window is going to be very, very crucial for Liverpool. And summer window is going to be crucial for Palace as well, in my opinion. Because without Zaha, I think they could struggle a bit. Elise, I think team will be in for Elise as well. Eze, so they need to think about how they're going to invest that money into the squad. And they've definitely a midfielder. They need a midfielder. The core is the only midfielder in the squad who I think is reliable and he stays fit. So they need to find another midfielder. But this is a very good result for Crystal Palace, but they're only six points off the relegation zone, so they had to st keep on getting some of these results to make sure they're not dragged into a relegation fight. But I think personally, I think the the teams between Palace and uh, relegation zone, there are quite a few teams, so I think Palace will be okay. So this is what this was the Premier League match here. Moving to Germany, and we're going to talk about the Bundesliga. Game. We had Hoffenheim take on Borussia Dortmund. And Borussia Dortmund won the game 1-0, but they could have scored 4 or 5 if they really wanted to Dortmund. And they weren't clinical, but they got the job done. They won the game 1-0, so starting the game off, they start the game really, they start with the game really in intent. They played really well, and then the 43rd minute is when they get the goal. And this goal is a quite a weird one, to be honest with you. So it's a ball into the box from Royce, and Julian Brandt scores with his back. See, I think it's Brandt is diving to head the ball, but he misses it, and hits it back and goes in. And Dortmund take the 1 0 lead, and then they second half, they tried to get a second, but they couldn't. But they see out the game, and it ends 1 0. And Dortmund went on top for a bit until Bayern Munich played Union Berlin, and Bayern just annihilated Union 2 for Bayern in that first half looks fantastic to you. Julian Nagelsmann side played with some really, really good football. I thought they, played, they were moving the ball sharply, they had a clear structure to their play. They were Muller looked good, I thought Musiala looked good, Chuba Moting surprisingly looked good as well. And the first half of the game was practically done when they were 3-0 up, so... Uh, for half an hour, to be fair, Union actually defended alright. But in the 31st minute, Bayern get the first goal. Then Bayern get the second, and the Bayern get third. It's just a 15-minute blitzkrieg. That finishes the game off and just makes sure that Bayern do get all three points. And Bayern and Dortmund... It's, it's been Bayern and Dortmund now on level points, with Union three points behind. Uh, so Union, I think they're more focused now, and they have to be more focused on trying to make sure they at least get the Champions League places. Because I think the title looks a bit out of reach, even if they're only three points off. But it just looks like a bit of out of reach now, so let's see what happens. And talk about the other game, we had RB Leipzig take on Eintracht Frankfurt. And Leipzig, it was a tale of two halves on Leipzig, I thought. In the first half, they played really, really well. They got the two goals, they were leading, they were playing so well. And come the second half, I don't know what happened to Leipzig. They went to sleep in that second half. Frankfurt got control, and Frankfurt got a goal at 61st minute or something. And they thought they could get one, maybe another one, but they couldn't quite rig the Leipzig defence down. But Leipzig, they went from playing really well in that first half to playing really, really bad in the second half. So it, it was strangely a carbon copy in the City game, where they played against City. In the first half against City, they were poor, in the second half, they were much, much better. So I think Marco Rosa needs to find a way to make sure that Leipzig are able to maintain that spirit, that consistency throughout the 90 minutes, just not play well for one half. But they're now in the top four, has Freiburg dropped points to buy Leverkusen. So I think Leipzig, they look, I think personally, I think they are one of the favourites for me to get that Champions League places. But let's see what happens. But it's currently the title race. It's between Dortmund and Bayern, in my opinion. Maybe Leipzig could sneak in there, but they have to be more consistent. They can't be playing like this. But they are one half good, second half not good. They have to be more consistent, in my opinion. And moving to France, we had uh, Marseille take on PSG. And PSG actually played really, really well, I thought, for once. They changed the shape a bit compared to the Leo game and they played more of the team with the technical qualities of Neymar and um, not Neymar, Neymar didn't play Messi and Mbappe on the attack. And it was much much better from Gautier's side. They had a clear game plan, they defended as a team and attacked as a team. And of course in attack they're gonna hurt any sort of team because of the quality of players we got Mbappe and Messi. The vote looked good. I think first of all Mbappe gets the first goal, then Messi gets the second, then in the second half Mbappe gets his second as well. But I think this is a great result in PSG now practically. They have one hand on top. They're 8 points clear of Marseille. And they are now also 10 points clear of Monaco who lost this weekend as 3-0 at home to Nice. So in PSG will feel in much sigh of relief because they, because they almost, the title was slowly, slowly slipping away. But now they've got full control over it. And talk about Marseille, I thought they played well but they, defensively they were a bit leaky. I thought they gave away too many easy chances to PSG. And then they got the... In the attack, they struggled. They struggled to get that final pass or the final shot right. And I think 
that's where the Marseille they really like that killer instinct which PSG had on the day and Marseille they had to focus on trying to stay in the Champions League places because I think Igor Tudor has done a fantastic job with that team they, they stay in the Champions League places I think that will be a good achievement as well for them and uh, moving to Spain we had the Atletico Madrid I mean Real Madrid take on Atletico Almeria take on Barcelona so Real Madrid versus Atletico more drop for Real Madrid and this was an opportunity to try and close the gap to Barcelona to five points but they couldn't they dropped more yet more points so talking about this game I think Simeone had the game plan spot on they sat in a low block looking telling Madrid try and break us down and Real Madrid, they are, they struggle to break teams down. When a team sit deep against them, they struggle. Which is why I think, I think most teams will prefer to play against Real Madrid in that low block. And that plan was working expertly, I thought, from Simeone. Until the 70th minute where they had a sending off. And he thought they are going to have to defend even more. And maybe Madrid sent to an opportunity. But no, 76th minute. Uh, let's go Madrid take the lead. You're thinking, oh my god, they actually got a goal. They got 15 minutes odd to defend. But they're not. They can't. They quite don't. They don't quite manage it. And Alvaro Rodriguez, the new striker, youngster. I really like this guy. I think he's a real player for Uruguay for Real Madrid. He looks like a real player. And I think Real Madrid might have found a Benzema successor because he looks really, really good. Uh, and he makes it one one eighty fifth minute. And you're thinking maybe, maybe just maybe Madrid could get a second, but they couldn't quite. And therefore, I think it's more drop points for Manchester men. But it's a long way to go. It's a long way to go. And Bar- talk about Real Madrid's rivals, Barcelona, they lost away 1-0 to Almeria this weekend. And Barca, they didn't play particularly well against United on Thursday, but they this just this was just poor, outright poor. They they def- didn't defend well, and they gave it too many chances in the counter, I thought, to Almeria. I think Almeria could have scored maybe another goal if they really wanted to. Midfield didn't have the control like normally Barcelona teams have, where they control the game, but I don't think the uh, Barcelona midfield were able to quite do that. They didn't help the attackers at all because midfielders are very crucial to helping attackers get chances. But I don't think the attackers I mean, they really helped the attackers in any sort of way. And to be fair, the attackers didn't help themselves as well. To be fair, it was pretty stagnant attacking from three. There was no movement. There was no rotations. There was no unpredictability. Player coming short. Player coming behind. It was really, really static. I thought from the front three of Barcelona, and they lacked that X factor, that fear factor. I thought that Dembele had been showing, Rafinha to an extent had been showing for them this year. And I think Enzo Fati, I think he was meant to be that X Factor player, but I think he's still recovering from that bad injury of his. Maybe in the future, but he wasn't good enough. It's simple as that for Barcelona. And now they got that. But, however, they did not manage to. They didn't damage them too much as Real Madrid also failed to take advantage. And the gap is still a very sizable seven point lead with 15 matches to go. Both teams need to play, play each other once as well. So let's see what happens. But in Barcelona, they can't be playing like they did have against Almeria. Otherwise, I think Real Madrid will recover that seven-point gap. And talk about the final Italy Italian league. We had Napoli take on Empoli and Napoli. Oof. I I can't stop singing phrases of this Napoli team. They're just so so good. They're playing with confidence. There's real class about how they're playing. There's a, a real uh, uh, we call uh, a real will. They're fighting for each other. They. Whenever they're on the board, there's literally two or three players I can think of that a player can pass to. They're not stagnant. They were moving about. They're creating opportunities to other players, making life easier. And that's what football is all about. You're meant to, even if you're not, you're not getting the ball. You're meant to get into positions that makes the life, that makes the life of a teammate easier. And I think Napoli is especially at the moment. Spalletti, tremendous job he's doing in Napoli so far. And if we do let a let a girl grandpa, I would love to if we go for Spalletti. And actually, given time, not do what we did with Sari because I thought under Mirza Sari things would have gone well as well. But it, the fact he went to Juventus, but if we get gave time to Sari, I think it would have been a really, really good team. But I think let's see what happens. But I think Napoli is going to be really, really difficult to get these quality players out. Napoli, well, you got Kim Menjai. I think he's a really underrated defender. Uh, you got Anguissa in midfield. He looks a tank. You got uh, Karaskeli, of course, the diamond. 150 million or nothing, I think that's going to be his price tag. I've seen him, 150 million as well. And I think the, the squad and the depth for Napoli is fantastic as well. Because I think that's the one thing Napoli always lacked. They have a good team, they'll have a good style of play and they'll dominate the team. But they'll run out of fuel in the end because of the squad. But this time Napoli had a squad for sure. they got Raspadori on the bench, they got Simeone on the bench. And these guys can come on and change the game. You've got Politano, so they've got loads of good players. And plus I think Balletti is using them really, really well as well. 
and they all seem to be really it's a really happy atmosphere at the moment at the Maradona Stadium and I think it's going to take a really good team to beat this Napoli team even in the Champions League so let's see what happens and talking about Napoli's so-called title rivals Inter Inter lost the road to Bologna this weekend and Thiago Motta's side and it's a great result for Bologna I thought they played really really well but Inter they looked empty there was nothing from Inter they were early mostly relying on transitions to get forward Lukaku was their only bit of like player who could hold up the ball, get other players in the play. But otherwise, it was a blank performance out of a mentor. And I don't think they played really, really, really badly. But they didn't play well enough to even win the game. It was a pretty, what you call it, just a blank performance. Right? Just nothing, they didn't do anything in the game. I think that's how I felt watching Inter in that game. And now they're Inter, practically, they're fighting with uh, AC Milan, Roma, nah, Atalanta and Lazio for top four. I think that's going to be realistic. They aim for Inter now. As Napoli, I think it's that, that ship it's just gone. 18 points clear, just madness. So, and talking about the final game of the weekend in Italy, uh, we had AC Milan take on Atalanta, and AC Milan winning the game 2 0. And it was a great straight for Milan. They played really, really well, in my opinion. They completely had control of the match. They played with a real panache, and they played with a real class in this match. I thought they were just that level above Atalanta, and Atalanta have been really, really good in this. The season until their last two games where they lost to Lecce and now to Milan and talk about the first half and it was a really dominant start from Milan and they deservedly get a goal from their dominance 24th minute and what a goal from Teo Hernandez that was and he's only he's free he's, I think 30 35 yards away from goal he just smashes it into the bottom left hand corner making Milan 1-0 and from there on Milan continued to create chances and they defended it well and they had more control and then eventually in the second half they get second killing off the game completely and this was the Milan that we saw last season where they're controlling games they were they were winning games and they had a lot of, they lost a bit of track recently but Pioli's change of formation to a back three has worked wonders and in including Marvick Thor into that Milan defense has worked wonders as well in my opinion he looks like a fantastic young defender and him Kalulu and uh, Tomori looks like a great back three at the moment from Milan young energetic and they're able to defend for each other really, really well. Uh, Teo Hernandez, ex- even despite that great goal, he looked really, really good. Otherwise, running up and down the pitch, especially. And uh, you had Tonali in the field, look good as well. You had Leao front, attacking wise, he was able to create. He was able to double pass play with ease. And uh, AC, that was that was the type of performance that they needed. That was, it could be the catalyst for the rest of the season. They still got the Champions League to focus at. They got the uh, the league top four to focus at as well. I mean, them and Inter, they're both 18 points behind Napoli in the table, so less said the better about the title charge. I think the Scudetto defence has been a shambles for Milan, but let's see what happens. And we move to the EFL Cup final as Manchester United take on Newcastle United, and United won the game two, two goals coming in the first half. And Newcastle actually started the game really, really well. They dominated, they looked to, to be aggressive to United, and that's just, just, just played into Manchester United's hand. As United mounted to their Newcastle play on the front foot, so they had the players who could hit Newcastle on the counter, and that's what exactly happened. And United 2 0 up at half time, they're looking comfortable in the second half. Newcastle huff and puff, but United stay strong defensively and able to get the victory. And it's a great, great moment for Eric Ten Hag. I think this could be the catalyst for his success in Manchester United, like Arteta winning that FA Cup, or you got. Uh, Eddie Howe coming in and just turning them around. I think this is Eric Ten Hag moment, and he's done a fantastic job with this Manchester United team. And I don't think this is even 25% of what really Ten Hag's going to be a ball about. I think they're only going to get better and better and better. And if the owners, be it the Glazers or someone else, if they back Ten Hag, I think United will be a really fun team to watch in the future as well. So, congrats to Manchester United, and uh, let's see what happens. So, this was your weekend review, and I hope you liked it. I hope you like this new concept of mine where we've been discussing all the leagues in general, just not the Premier League. And leave, leave a like on the video if, if you want me to carry on with this type of content for you guys. And if you like the video, don't forget to like and share the video. And if you like my YouTube videos in general, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave me your opinions in the comments down below about all the matches I talked about, uh, all the leagues I talked about, and where do you think, uh, you know, who do you think will win the Bundesliga, who do you think will win Ligue 1. Uh, who do you think will win La Liga? Do you think Real Madrid will come back? And who do you think will get top four in Italy? And who do you think will get Premier League, relegated in the Premier League? And much more. And I hope to see you guys later.